poštovani gledatelji, lijep pozdrav i dobrodošli u novu epizodu emisije Diplomacija. Danas putujemo do same koljevke diplomacije, do zemlje čiji je jezik i službeni jezik diplomacije, naravno govorimo o Francuskoj, a moj cijenjeni gost ovdje u Zagrebačkom studiju je veleposlanik Republike Francuske u Hrvatskoj, njegova ekselencija Gael Vesje. Your excellency, you welcome and thank you for taking the time for our show. Thank you very much and zao mi je, I'm very sorry not to be able to do that in Croatian. Uh, but uh, still, I'm, I'm trying to learn Croatian, but it's very difficult for me. But it's okay, since French is the language of diplomacy, I'm sorry for not speaking ah, French. Okay. <laughs> so, let's call it even. So, one, one, one. We are even. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, usually we start the interview with the reflection of uh, diplomatic relations as they are today. Mm -hmm. However, I would like this interview to start with the story of uh, first contact with French culture and the story of the Illyrian movement. I've heard there's a quite interesting story behind it. So. Well, there are very interesting stories, uh, absolutely, between France and Croatia for ages. And when you look at it, for example, um, Roger Boscovich, who was a famous, very famous Croatian scientist, he was also a very famous scientist in France too, and he was a member of the French Academy. Uh, and there are very old uh, links between uh, Croatia, but all, in particular Dalmatia and the split region and France. Uh, in particular business links, links with um, the Mediterranean Sea, with Marseille. Uh, and certainly, uh, you know, that Marseille, very south of France, was actually founded by Greek, um, Greek people uh, coming from Great Greece and, and maybe even from some part of Croatia, who don't, we don't know. So we have very ancient links. Uh, but then, of course, we had this incredible moment where actually the Illyrian provinces uh, were part of the French uh, Empire under uh, Napoleon I. Uh, it was quick to some extent, and maybe this is why it ended uh, well, uh, with um, not too bad uh, memories um, from the creation side. Uh, but I think it was, of course, it was a military occupation, so there is nothing to be to be very happy about that. But at the same time, uh, well, first, at that, at that time before the French presence, uh, the, the region was under control of Austria. Uh, it was not independent, not at all. Uh, and then the French uh, army brought some new ideas, uh, the Enlightenment uh, ideas. They built some bridges, some roads. Some of them are actually still used today. And we had a very uh, important exposition in Zadar and in Zagreb about the roads from the French Empire, who are, which are the basis of the uh, network, railroad network in Delmecia today, uh, but also schools, uh, bridges and so on, um, and opening trade. And this is why when you go to Split, for example, uh, the, one of the main streets is the Marmont Nova Avenue, where there is the French Alliance, uh, which is very important because it celebrates this year its 100th birthday. So, happy birthday, French yeah. Alliance. Uh, bon anniversaire, exactly. Uh, okay, you mentioned uh, Marmont, and there's immense uh, presence uh, of French in Dalmatia, of course. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's also interesting fact, I read somewhere that uh, the French were the first nation who actually built, uh, who actually paid, sorry, the workforce to build. So other nations and occupators just you know, use the workforce and you're, the French. You're perfectly true, uh, but it was a consequence of the French Revolution, actually, uh, because there was no more s uh, forced labor, which used to be the case under French kings, of course, but no more with the French Revolution. And Napoleon Bonaparte was the heir of the revolution to some extent. To some extent, it was a bit different, but on this. Uh, and so, yes, um, uh, tr labor was uh, maybe forced, but it was paid. Uh, and actually, uh, there was also uh, free citizenships or complete citizenships for Jews, for example, uh, which is something that we had done under the French Revolution and which was brought by uh, the Italian provinces in, uh, in Dalmatia. Yeah. Okay, so we have uh, certainly a rich history together. Mm -hmm. And how are our relations today? So this year, we've celebrated the 30th anniversary Ooh. of our diplomatic relations. How would you describe those now? I think we have very intense, uh, very bright uh, relationships. I've been posted in Croatia for the last three years. I'm very lucky. And in three years, I've seen them develop and grow. And we, we, I think we are 
collectively uh, coming from some good relationships. They have never been bad in our history, I must say, uh, but rather good or frankly good to strategic, which is a bit something diff different because we share the same views of the challenges ahead and sometimes we share the same ideas about how to face it, how to raise up to the challenges. And I think that what is really important is that France and Croatia, or two governments at least, do share the same views that Europe is part of the solution and not part of a problem, mainly. We may disagree on details and practice how, how, to, you know, how to manage this, uh, but it's easy to find out some collective ways that we could agree on because we share this strategic view that, again, Europe is part of a solution. Uh, and I think it's, it's extremely uh, important and we need countries like Croatia. I must say that the fact that Croatia is going to enter into the Eurozone, and I hope, I cross my fingers into Schengen on the 1st of January. Um, it's very good news, of course, for Croatia. I'm convinced of that. But it's also very good news for Europe because it demonstrates that we are still attractive and that the, the traditional um, way of building Europe, integrating Europe, is actually working well. Mm -hmm. Countries, including the newest member state, uh, Croatia, uh, is willing to get right to the heart of the Franco-German built engine of Europe which is Eurozone and Schengen. And this is great. This uh, is great. Eurozone and Schengen were actually my uh, next question. So we do have your support there. Thank you for that. And do you think that it will uh, affect our relations, like Croatia and France? I think it will help develop uh, even more our relationships. You know, the more formats we have in common, the more opportunities the head of states and governments, uh, ministers and so on, have to meet directly, uh, the better. Last year, for example, there was this incredible great news of Croatia entering into MED9, you know, this Mediterranean organization uh, of members of um, the EU. Uh, and I think it was, it was completely crazy that Croatia would not be in this. You have, you know, one, uh, how many hundreds of kilometers of coast and, um, and more than 1,000 islands. Uh, so, yes, uh, the, the more the better. Uh, and I think that it will, the more we see each other, the more we learn to work together, the more projects we have, mm -hmm. and the more successes we have, and the more willing we are to get along and to continue. Of yeah. course, and we are collaborating on many different aspects. One of yeah. them is definitely language yeah. and education. So um, we have a French language section here at yeah. University in Zagreb, uh, as well as the French International School of Zagreb. Mm -hmm. Then uh, I think five French alliances mm -hmm. that are spread in all over oh, Croatia. Wow. So. Dubrovnik, Ostiek, Rijeka, Zagreb. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that um, your system of education is one of the best in Europe, mm -hmm. definitely. Uh, how would you describe Croatian one and what do you think we can do to improve our educational system? Well, I think Croatia has got a great education system. Uh, Croatian um, young people are extremely well trained. They are very good at languages, uh, English, of course, but also French and other languages. Uh, they are very well trained, and I know that uh, French firms are keen to hire um, uh, young Croatians, French speaking or not French speaking. Uh, young Croatians, because of their skills in engineering, uh, informatics, or whatever. Um, if there would be something that could be, in my view, um, of course, um, um, better, done better, it is the fact that in the creation system uh, there is a second um, language, learning language, which is possible, but it is not compulsory. And so this entails that sometimes parents do have the choice between, I don't know, informatics and and learning French or German or Chinese or whatever. Uh, and, and sometimes they will think that, you know, um, Informatics is more useful in life, uh, which is, which is, which is um, in principle something which is debatable because informatics changes very quickly. I had some informatic classes back in my days and I can assure you that I learned Cobalt and some languages which does not even more exist today. <laughs> so I'm not sure it brought me anything. But I learned English uh, and I learned Spanish and I learned other languages and this is still useful for me. So if I would have a plea to make, uh, and we, we, sh we have shared that of course with the Minister of Education, uh, would be for, for Croatia to, uh, rejoin, to rejoin the list of European countries who which do think that having a second compulsory foreign language, whatever, is good. We defend French, 
but we also defend plurilingualism. It's even more important than defending yes, France. I completely agree. Speaking of language, uh, I know that language is, of course, closely linked with um, growing touristic uh, attraction, and uh, Croatia is one of a growing touristic destination for the French. And I know that you have some training programs for uh, French language for tourist workforce. Absolutely. Well, we have some training programs for tourist workforce, be it cooks, because as you may know, um, the, the first um, treaties of uh, cooking, or the main ones in the 19th century and 18th century were written in French, but of course mainly for front desks in the hotels, uh, service in restaurants. It's true that French, uh, French tourists do speak English more and more, but it's also true that it's always, you feel so much welcomed when you arrive in a restaurant in, a, in another place in the EU and then somebody would address to you a few words in your, in your own language. So you feel at home. And if you, when you are feeling at home and relaxed, of course, you, you take more time. And um, I think it's a win-win situation. So this is something that we are, we are proposing. In fact, the French alliances, in particular in Split and Dubrovnik and also Rijeka, are pushing this forward, uh, be it online or being you know, classical training uh, sessions. Uh, and I do hope that it will, it will meet the interest of the creation industry and creation local authorities, uh, because I do think that it's, a, it's an absolute win-win. Um, I am told, but I have not seen the official figures yet, that French people may have been the first uh, foreigners by numbers this summer in Split, for example. Uh, more than Germans. Uh, so this is quite important. Uh, it's good for Croatia, it's good for us. Uh, and actually, you know, ambassadors, governments, we are doing our best. We can try to uh, give ideas, we can try to push things forward. Ultimately, what counts is the links between the peoples. Of course. And what do you think French like uh, about oh. Croatia in terms, speaking of tourism, and the other way around? You know, French people, uh, it's very difficult to say what they like. I know what they don't like. They don't like the all-included package. Doesn't mean that they are not doing this from time to time. But it's not the typical thing people want for their holidays. They want to see interesting things. They want to see historical sites. They want to visit museums, they want to meet people, they want to have a bit of a flavor of the country where they are in. This is part of our culture. It's a way of sharing, actually. And you know, I'm from Marseille, very south of France. It's obvious when I go to Split, we have so many in common. We are, we are cousins, basically, right? Neighbors and cousins. Uh, so um, French people, they like this. And I think that um, you have plenty of this in Croatia, <laughs> in, yes. in Split, but also in, in Dalmatia, everywhere. Uh, and uh, I think it's a, it's a great asset. Uh, and uh, it's a sustainable de development asset. But the emphasis could be put even more like this. I'm not sure that multiplying by two the number of tourists would be the right way to do, because there are already quite a number of people coming to Croatia. Um, but having longer season period and people who would like to stay more and to spend more, because they, are, they go a bit off-roads. They, they go visit things, they get interested. And actually, this is where the links between the two people are really being made. Uh, our next uh, topic is economy and economic relations. So France uh, market share in Croatia, um, the researchers say, uh, has not yet reached its full potential. However, it has been steadily increasing over the last four and more years. Yeah. Uh, what do you think, what are our key points of our economic collaboration? Well, we have strong economic cooperation, it is, but you're right, it's still below our potential. And one of the main priorities of the strategic partnership signed by President Emmanuel Macron when he came to, to Croatia one year ago, and the Prime Minister of Croatia, Mr. Plenkovic, is precisely to try to develop this. Um, I think that many things were frozen during two or three years because of COVID, obviously. Uh, and then when it unfroze, unfortunately, uh, some French firms, you know, they came back to the traditional uh, usual markets that they, are, that they know very well, Germany, UK, Spain, Italy, because it's, well, it's our neighbor, it's our neighbors to us. Um, but we are trying to, to show how many opportunities there are in Croatia. Actually, we have a, a, an important business community, not so much compared to other countries, but still 
with more than 60 um, firms um, being members of the Chamber, Chamber of Commerce, France and Croatia here, here in, in, in Zagreb. Uh, and, um, and we have new investments uh, in particular, including in sustainable development themes of the, the group Foundation Pearl, for example, in, did invest in biomass in Slovenia. Uh, Aqua Energy has been there for quite, quite some time. And of course, everybody knows about the Zagreb Airport, which is uh, depending from French companies, uh, and the um, highway run by Buig, the Y of Istria, um, uh, in, in Istria precisely. Uh, so there are many things to be done, and of course Decathlon, if you go, people in Croatia love sports. Of course. are so good at sports, <laughs> but I think, I think it's a later, to a later to stage <laughs> question. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, so there are plenty of things to be done, and I hope that now that uh, COVID is a bit it's not completely behind us, unfortunately, uh, but still we have we, we have learned to live with that uh, and to to be safer, including with that. Um, so I hope it will not um, in the uh, make too difficult uh, the, the significant development of our relationship to get to our potential. Uh, what about agriculture? I think I, yeah. organic agri agriculture is something that we can both mm. work on. Organic agriculture, in fact, France, France is already here. For example, Lactalis, uh, which is the, one of the main actors in the milk industry, uh, is present in Croatia. Uh, and I visited their installations two weeks ago, maybe three, maybe three weeks. Um, uh, and we had the visit of a specialist from the French Ministry of Agriculture based in Rome, um, at that time uh, to try to develop links. So yes, uh, agriculture, but the, the sustainable agriculture, modern agriculture, there are lots of things to be done. And uh, I do think that we, we could develop that even more, uh, definitely. Yeah. Uh, another area that binds us is, of course, the defense sector. We can skip that one. So what do these uh, projects that we've been working on together mean in terms of improving our defense industries within the European framework? And European fund, of course. I think actually the Croatian decision was key. It was a key decision for Croatia, but, but also for the EU, in fact, because it was the choice of a fully EU solution. Of course, 100% compatible and consistent with NATO, obviously. Uh, and there is no choice to be made between EU and NATO. Actually, when you invest in, today, when you invest in your defense in Europe, you invest for yourself, you invest for bilateral relationships, but also for EU and for NATO too. So um, I think it's a game changer. Uh, it's extremely important. Uh, and we are building on that and trying to develop this. For the time being, the process is perfectly on time. So there, was, there are today and yesterday, there were, or two days ago, there were some visits by um, French uh, people from the Ministry of the Armed Forces uh, precisely on this, and we are on track, as they say, so uh, nothing to worry. And actually, we do have in France already some mechanics being trained, and soon we'll have some pilots. Uh, and uh, of course, I would like to express the opportunity to to wish a quick recovery to the two MiG pilots. Uh, I think one of them were, was inj injured. And of course, we, we hope that they will be uh, they will be well and um, fully, 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 fully able to, to, to start again in, um, in, um, in a short time. Uh, the, the main thing, as it was said by the Croatian authorities, is the life of pilots, of course. Yes, of course. Yes, thank you for that. Um, uh, you said you've been here for three years now. Indeed. Something about what do you think about Croatia? So I'm talking now about our customs, our language, our music, food. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love it. I love it because all of it. <laughs> well, of course there are there are differences, but what is very striking for a foreigner is that you have this incredible diversity. Uh, the coast is very different from I don't know. Slovenia, um, Slavonia, sorry, uh, or from uh, or from uh, Varaždin or Istria, Istria or Zagreb itself. So places are very different. Culture, the habits of life are different. Hours, the way people actually do business or make. Or, and at the same time, there is this incredible sense of unity, of being Croatian, what it means, and and at some moments. World Cup, for example, <laughs> but also, uh, but also, when there was these terrible earthquakes, there was this huge internal solidarity 
people, you know, all, everybody going to Petronia and trying to assist, trying to help. I think this is great. And this is something that I think we do have in common. Uh, uh, France is extremely diverse, uh, uh, but still there is this, this strong sense of, um, of unity. So I'm encouraged by all that, and, I, and I'm very uh, humbled by the sense of resilience of the Croatian people uh, in all those crises, which comes, of course, from your history. Uh, but I think it's, um, it's, um, it's something which uh, we, we all in Europe might learn a bit from. Uh, I think that we have a similar situation regarding the position and status of our cities. So uh, I'm referring to the relation between Split and Zagreb, and I think ah. your hometown mm. is it Olympic de Marseille? Ah, well, alors my hometown is Marseille, and the Marseille. football club is Olympique okay, de Marseille, sorry, then Marseille which, which and motto Paris. is is straight to the goal, droit au but, uh, and the relationship between this club and the. Paris Saint-Germain, the football club of Paris, is sometimes, sometimes complicated, as they say in the press. So um, it's difficult for an ambassador to say more than that, but still, yes, uh, this relationship between second and first cities in any country are different. There is a north-south also divide. Uh, sometimes, at least between, between Marseille and Paris, sometimes both sides like to play or to overplay these differences, uh, because it's part of this, you know, it's part of a culture. Uh, ultimately, uh, we all support um, uh, the French national team on soccer, <laughs> as, as you do in Croatia. So you see, of course, it's not so. It's not so. So, are you a football fan? I'm not a football fan, uh, but I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not, you know, I don't follow football every week, or I cannot tell you the names of ten players, whatever. Uh, but when there are big events, certainly I'm, I'm in front of my TV and supporting my team, and I watch the the, the end of the, the game between Croatia and Japan, actually, and before that I watch the game between Croatia and Canada. Uh, so, so all these are great, are great moments. Of course, now we have both teams have got some. Strong challenges ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of sport, we are near the end of the show. So uh, my last question is uh, the pending um, Summer Olympic and Paralympic Games. So yeah. the France will be the proud uh, host nation of the Games in 2024. Absolutely. It's absolutely um, essential for us. It is, it, is, it is a huge event. As you know, France played uh, an important role in the reawakening of the Olympic Games beginning of the 20th century in 1904. So it's a kind of anniversary for us. Uh, and we, we think that there is no, uh, no uni more universal event uh, where everybody can compete uh, and uh, to, to different view of also of sport, less, less professional. More. So the values of um, France, liberté, égalité, fraternité, but also the, the values of Olympism. Uh, so all this is extremely important for us. Uh, we are extremely happy. Of course, it's a, it's a huge challenge, uh, organizationally, yes. financially, logistically. Yes. So it's, a, it's certainly a terrible nightmare for people organizing, organize, organizing this, but they are doing this with patience. And of course, the network of the French embassies everywhere in the world is very keen on supporting that, mm -hmm. uh, because it's, it's a huge moment and we want to share that. Uh, and I'm, I'm quite happy that it will be done. If I may express a wish, it, it will be, of course, that by 2024, this terrible war in, led by Russia and Ukraine will be over, uh, because it is so terrible. Um, there was this very important um, conference in Sabor a few weeks ago on supporting Crimea, Ukrainian Crimea, of course. Uh, and uh, we have a big international conference in Paris on Tuesday, the 13th of December. And of course, next week will be important because there is this vote in Sabor on the 15th of, of December, and we will know if uh, Croatia is going to, to join the EU uh, military operations uh, or not. Uh, France is certainly willing to do this for, it, for ourselves, and we hope that the EU can rejoin in that. Thank you for that, and we wish you all the best in your ah. work, <laughs> and thank you for the time uh, for being here. It was great. Thanks, thanks for having me. And in fact, Saturday I will be in Split to give French diplomas, and I will be very happy to to have this opportunity to be to be back to Dalmatia. Okay, so maybe we'll see each other in a few days. Why not? <laughs> Thank thanks you very much. Poštovani gledatelji, došli smo do kraja još jedne emisije Diplomacija. Do sljedećeg petka je pozdrav i ostanite uz program Televizije Jadran.